It is Monday, April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. We don't joke around here. We got no jokes for you today. I thought about doing a fun April Fool's joke, like I fired Chris or something, and he mm. wasn't here for the first 10 minutes. I didn't even tell him about it. I had a bunch of ideas, but then I thought, we don't do that shit. We don't do snack cakes and also, fucking... Like, I'm a rhythm guy, man. Yeah, it would fuck, it would fuck Chris up. We don't do what your favorite Halloween candy is. We don't play April Fool's jokes. And when we tell you there's a new running back coach, guess what? That's who the new fucking running back coach is. We have a lot to discuss about the hire. Carlos Lachlan, is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Carlos Lachlan, coach the running Lock. Coach Lock from Oregon is coming in to be the new running backs coach. And I want to know why the beat still isn't talking about it. I mean, we put it out there, what, on Saturday, I think, because I heard from a, from a very good source inside the Woody, one of the best, uh, maybe the best source inside the Woody, Chris. <laughs> guy that might know a thing or two. He's the one that fucking signs the contracts, but I'm neither here nor, that's neither here nor there, that this guy was going to be the guy. But I, I I don't know if they didn't want it out there, but I mean, he told me knew, fully knowing that I would say it or tweet it or do something. And the beat has been mum on this one, haven't they? So much so that two days later, the national media is reporting it. But Austin Ward still hasn't said anything, Chris. What the fuck, Ginger? Oh. Oh, shucks. I shout, shout out Dave Biddle. Oh, Dave Biddle's a go. Yeah, that's a real Dave one. Biddle talked about it on, on Buck Nuts Morning 5, one of the only shows I listen yeah. to. Kirk Barton mentioned Kirk it. Kirk Barton yeah. mentioned it. So the real ones talk about it. The bitches don't. That's just what it is. So we want to talk about why. Not only that they aren't discussing it, why. We also have a scrimmage update. They aren't talking about that either. It's like they're pushing narratives with their little penises and ginger hair. Just can't seem to tell you the truth. Hey, my boy Zach got the town in on, on people's ass. Man, I'm telling you what. Shout out to the Army because hey, they, they started talking about the running back coach. They're on people's necks, and I'm here for it. Bro, and the intern is going crazy on that. Hey, the, the intern is going crazy on Menace of Sports, and I'm here for it. Bro, I, woke, I woke up this morning, I saw him reply, say my name, bitch. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm here for it. Shout out Charlie. Keep yeah. that energy up. He's under anybody that reports it. He's like, say our name, bitch. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've said it 100 times. We're not a breaking news outlet. I didn't care. I just found out that that was who was getting hired. And I searched the internet. No one was talking about it. And I'm like, well, people want to know. Yeah. Might as well tell them. And honestly, I didn't give a fuck if it was wrong. I just know yeah. my, my source was impeccable. So I, source was so good. You don't got to get it double checked, you know? Yeah, you don't even need a double. No, because the double checks are for the source that might have heard it from my source. Right. <laughs> so we got a lot to discuss. Apologize for the late start. I forgot we had ad reads to record. Oh, I told them all that someone had to pee, and I was making them guess who had to pee. Well, someone had to pee, and it was definitely Pat. Always Pat. We always blame Pat. <laughs> Literally, there were zero guesses for Pat. All seven guesses were for Chris. Well, of course. They love dunking on you. <laughs> um, also, if you see the threads, we got some new rebrand, freshly added to the website, menace to merch.com. This is the little trucker hat. We got a little rain jacket, perfect for golfing. Throw it in your golf bag. Um, I'm fired up about this this, this merch and rebrand. It's, it's going to be fun. So go check it out. And uh, I don't know, copy you a hat, copy your shirt. It's really good shit. How was your weekend? My weekend was great, man. Happy had, holidays, happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter to everyone out there. Uh, and happy visibility of of people who think they should cut their wieners off day. Bro, this might be fucked up, bro. But me and Power talking about it this morning because I thought like, I thought it was today, bro. Like the the visibility day was today, and that would have been crazy for visibility day and April Fools to be on the same day, bro. That's, That's they really should do that because we're so all getting fooled April, every day by this so shit. Fucked. But it is it is I, I I I thought it was hilarious. Everything everything turns political. It's like apparently March thirty first is always visibility of people who have mental disorders and want to cut their wieners off. I didn't know that, which happened to fall on Easter, but I did hear that. Um, that like they had an art contest at the White House and you weren't allowed to use any religious symbols for your Easter art. It's oh. like, what? <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not overly religious. I mean, I certainly have a faith in God, but that's, that's for me. You know, I don't push that on anyone, but like, how are you gonna make an Easter painting and not have it religious? It's like solely a religious holiday. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it was bizarre, but we're not here to discuss huh. it. I thought that was funny. Happy Easter. Happy Sunday. If you don't celebrate Easter yesterday, whatever it is, maybe you got some eggs, maybe you got some uh, chocolates, but I had a great weekend. Chicago volleyball tournament. My daughter's team killed it. Shout out Mintonette. I got to tell you some funny story too. The guy that owns Mintonette and runs his name's Max Miller, outstanding fucking coach. And he's built a monster at Mintonette. He came up to me. He was like, I got a funny story to tell you. 
One of my best friends, like 20 years, runs a volleyball club in Grand Rapids. He called me one day and was like, hey, yo, your club is, get, is, is getting blown up on my favorite show, Menace to Sports. So shout out to the Grand Rapids volleyball guy. Yeah. I don't know you, your name or your club, but you listen. And you, you told Max I was talking about Mintonette. We, we got a little Grand Rapids crew. Like, oh, GR I, I crew up in house. Like, like Matt, Kate, Jake, all from GR. I love, I love Grand Rapids. I, yeah, it, it's awesome. It's mm -hmm. awesome to see. But my daughter uh, had a volleyball tournament. They, uh, they went five and one in pool play. Made it to the gold bracket, made it to the final four, got knocked out, got third in the tournament, got a medal. She was on cloud nine. She played outstanding. It was really cool. Um, Chicago's still a shithole, and I didn't get home till 3.30 in the morning. That's why I'm not shaved. That's why I look like shit, and that's why my, I'm kind of all over the place chaotic. But it was a great weekend. You're handsome to me. Thank you, Chris. I love you for that. No diddy. But let's talk about it. We got too much shit to talk about. I need you to drop in the chat. Is the Buckeye beat full of bitches? Yes or no? <laughs> Is the Buckeye beat full of bitches? Yes or no? Luki, let them know what time it is, Bubba. Let's get to the show. Let's get to the show. I don't know if this is April Fool's or not, but just some, some noteworthy media news. One of our biggest followers at Menace to Sports on, on that account, Steve Wolfong, announced that he's going to On3, leaving 247. Not everybody's the in, Everybody's in the portal. Everybody's in the portal. Even the portal guys are in the portal. Right. He's like the number one portal guy out there. Now he's in the portal. Mm -hmm. I did see a thing talking about Jesus entered the portal <laughs> yesterday and, and chose to go to heaven. And the devil is, is bitching to the NCAA about tampering. That God was tampering. <laughs> okay. But yeah, it's crazy. The fall. <laughs> Legend. Legendary. Steve Wilfong is going to take his talents to, I don't know, probably like Omaha or somewhere. I don't know where on three is located, but that's a big news, man. The Fong is one of the biggest names at uh, whatever, was, 247. He was, he was the biggest name at 247. And honestly, Zach, like if, if one person deserve, like that I would like to do a documentary about that is like doesn't play the game, it would be Shannon Terry. Yeah. I mean, dude, started Rivals, started 247. So he started it, sold it to Yahoo. Started 247, sold it to CBS. And then on three, and they're, they're going to sell it to Fox. Probably. This man, I, I would love, love to know how much money he's made from that. Dude must know what he's doing when he creates recruiting services. That's the one thing I do know. Not a huge fan of his, but I don't dislike him. I don't really know him, but he's done a great job building recruiting websites, I guess. He literally created the industry and then created the competition within the industry. Right. How he, nuts is that? It's nuts. He created Rivals, which was the only, I mean, ESPN was awful. Mm -hmm. Scout was awful. Those were awful. Like Rivals was the one, and it wasn't even close. And then he sold it, and he was like, eh. I can do better. Yeah. Made 247. And then it was like, yeah, fuck rivals. That shit stinks. 247 is the go-to. Mm -hmm. He's like, ah, I'll sell that. You think that's enough? Nah. He's like, I still can do better. <laughs> Created on three. And I, now I, I still think 247 does a good job. I think rivals kind of still sucks for the most part. Well, he created a competition, and he knew all of Rivals' weaknesses. So, yeah. You know, onward, onward. It's kind of fucked up that you built the company with the weaknesses and then right. took advantage of it. Well, you know, like, if you see the mistakes on your way up, it's like the first time you draw something, it's not going to be as good as the second or third time. Yeah. Kind of what it is, and make sure there's no religious signs in your drawings. Yeah. Um, key, that's key. <laughs> over the weekend, NC State women's and men's both advanced to the Final Four. What a time for them. Yeah, a great time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had fun watching March Madness. My bragging is shot to shit. I mean, I don't even have a Final Four team in the race. I don't think so, but it's been fun. It's been fun. And been what, really what is it tonight? Is tonight Iowa LSU? Um, I think so. I Bro, should know. Just give. I'm I'm watching. If you're not watching, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Angel versus Caitlin. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be badass. It's gonna be the most watched college basketball game in the history of women's college basketball by a landslide. It's gonna be awesome. I think it's tonight. I'm almost yep, positive. It's tonight. Chat saying tonight. Yeah, tonight. I'm so fired up for it. And I don't know if you saw Angel Reese's comments, but they asked her about like. The, the rivalry and dislike for Caitlin Clark. And she was like, I never said I didn't like her. She was like, she was like, I mean, I'll kick it with her. Like I'm, we, we talk off the court, but like mm -hmm. make no mistake. And I love this woman. She said, make no mistake. When we get in between them white lines, there are no friends. Like I'm gonna talk shit. I'm gonna be in your face. I'm gonna be on your fuck on your neck. Like, and then after the game, we can kick it. That's cool. Whatever. Like right. I, it's, it's no bad blood. She was like, so make no mistake. I don't hate her, but when we're in between those lines, I'm gonna be talking crazy. <laughs> And I can't yeah. wait for it. And last year, I think a lot of like the the out of court rivalry stuff kind of stemmed from people, like the people from outside the sporting world looking in at it. It's kind of what blew the rivalry up because like that game became more about like national commentary rather yeah. than like within the sports world. And that's why you get all the wild takes. Yeah, and it's just like and it became political because remember uh, Joe Biden said maybe they could both come to the White House. And then like <laughs> you had everybody in the world pouring in. So that that's 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 kind of that's kind of what happened. But it, it's just it's. It's truly like Jekyll and Hyde, right? It's yeah. like it's it's like yin and yang. It's like total opposite 
personalities. Like one looks like a librarian. One looks like a badass college basketball player. Mm. It's like they just and it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for it. So I will tune in. I would encourage you to do the same. Someone said, would you uh, five hundred thousand dollars or a date with Caitlin Clark? <laughs> five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> three times over. You're fried, bro. You were going to date with Caitlin Clark? Nah. <laughs> did you did you did you see that uh the nc state texas elite eight game bro they had two different three-point line lights for the women's game see this is what happens this you, is a we, bad deal we talk about equal there, women's basketball has never been hotter and mm-hmm. honestly women's collegiate sports has never been hotter from volleyball to softball to basketball like they're on tv and i tune like i watch and i know i have a 12 year old that plays sports so that's part of the reason but they're also really entertaining yeah. shit i went to a, a ohio state softball game last week like it's never been bigger and then people fucking do shit like this and it's like god you make a mockery of it like you have two three point lines on each side of the floor one is shorter than the other yeah it's like it's just such a bad look Literally. it's like pe- people that believe women's sports is mickey mouse club this reinforces that narrative when it shouldn't be it's not it's very entertaining i i, I love it at least at the collegiate level, pro sports, maybe not, but I'd shout out to the Fury, the Columbus volleyball team. They're fun as shit to watch the professional volleyball team here. We're just like it's el- just- elite eight game, biggest game of the year, like massive game. And you go out there and the girls notice immediately that that three point line is shorter than that three point line. Something's not right. They get the tape measure out and basically they go to both coaches. Like, I mean, we, we could, get a new court in here, but it would take X amount of hours. Like right. we don't know like when we well, can do good, it. And the good news is you're going to trade going each way, right? Yeah. So you will have the advantage at least half or for half the game. So it's, it's somewhat a level playing field until it's like, Oh, need a three to win it. You're yeah. like, fuck, we got the long side. God damn it. <laughs> it's just like you have one job. I mean, is it that hard? It cannot be that hard. 8 million high schools across America can do it. But the, NCA can't do it for elite the elite eight. eight. Just a bad look, man. It's it's just it, it it gives like it's women already have to fight with the inferiority, right? Athletically, they're inferior to mm. ma- their male counterpart. They already have to deal with that. And now you're gonna do cracker jack bullshit like this to make it look even worse. Like yeah. just really bad look for the NCA. And they gotta wear it, right? Like they just gotta they just gotta accept it because they weren't gonna delay the game. All right, it is what it is. And I did like the coach's comments afterwards, like. Literally only in women's basketball. Right. Only in women's basketball could this happen. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Insane Insane wild stuff. Zach, this happened on Friday, bro, before, uh, you know, obviously we were were out last Friday. We we took a day off. Michael Penix fucking showed out at his pro day now. He balled out. He balled out. And I'm I'm excited. I think I'm going to do the uh, Oregon-Washington game of bourbon and ball tomorrow. Okay. The Um, second one or the first one? The the second one. The the Pac-12 championship game. I'm going to break it down because, as I told you, I already broke down, if you want to check it out, Bourbon and Ball, like two weeks ago, I broke down the Michigan defense against Michael Penix Jr., and it was very underwhelming. But you never want to judge a prospect on arguably his his low moment, right? His low moment was not – he didn't play well at all in that game, and Michigan's defense suffocated that Washington offense. So we're going to watch him in a brighter spot against Oregon in a game they won, in a game he played well, because – that one really jaded my opinion of him. And I don't want, I want to have a, a nice, like a holistic, yeah, a foundation opinion on Michael Penix Jr. So we're going to break that down. Might do like a half of him, half of Bo Nix. I haven't decided exactly the format, but tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, bourbon and ball. And I'm going to open a good bottle. I don't know what yet. Maybe stag. It's been, I think I already did stag though. I don't know. I got to look and see which ones I've done. Maybe Blanton's, maybe a little EH Taylor. And we're going to break down uh, Penix Jr. and Bo Nix. Yeah. Zach, I but, but sorry, four five, 40, yeah, was, 37 so, inch yeah. vert. Oh my god, sub four five, over thirty. I mean, keep keep in mind, he jumped higher than Keyshawn Booty. Like jumped higher and ran faster than Keyshawn Booty with bum knees. Like right, his big concern is like his knees. All the Dude, ACLs. Is, like if he just to make the point, if he never tore his ACL, you're talking legit low four four, mm-hmm. probably forty inch vertical guy. Yeah. Nuts. It's like Jaden Daniels' uncle right here, bro. It is. Like, his, his old uncle. Like, yeah. what, what up, Unc? Like, his his hands measured in big, long arms. Zach, I, if someone would have held a gun to my head before before all the testing and said, who's a better athlete, J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix Jr., I would have said, oh. J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy. Oh, not, for it's sure. Not, it's not even close. No. Not even close. And if you watch the way he ran his 40, dog, it looked like bro jogged. <laughs> now, I've seen the NFL do it. It doesn't seem like they're going to do it with him. But – with those testing numbers, 
Plus, he's got a lot of good on tape. I know he's got some of the red flags. He's got to be a first rounder, right? Yeah. Like he would have to be. I mean, I would think with that type of pro day and, and you know, barring, I want to watch this Oregon game before I stamp it, but I would think late first is fair to say. Late first. And maybe even mid first, you know, all it takes is all it takes is a couple of good private workouts, a good pro day. And then, you know, the highlight reel on tape, which he certainly has. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're talking about you mid first round. Like, and like, if we're going to point to the game where he struggled the most against that defense, which we can all say best, best defense in college football, probably. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Then I mean, that it, defense is why they won the national championship. Then isn't that okay? Yeah. Like, isn't it okay for your one struggle game to be against the best in college football? Well, yeah, you don't want it to be against just an average team. Or, you know, like... You don't like, want it to be against Bowling Green. Yeah, or like like Caleb Williams. Like, didn't... Now, I'm not saying Notre, Notre Dame had a really good defense. They did. But not Michigan. They didn't have a Michigan defense. And, and they made USC's Caleb Williams look like a fucking... Like an average-ass player. Yeah, he did. So they've all had their, their low moments. Um, we broke down Caleb Williams against Notre Dame during the season. And... Um, so I'm, so I'm excited to break down a, a highlight game for, yeah. for Michael Pettix Jr. And also, at some point, I think you should break down that. Oh, you did break down the Texas game, but not so much yeah. a quarterback play slant because I heard he went crazy against Texas. Yeah. Kind of in the, in the way he he looked kind of on film. For for you, at least, the one of the major concerns that's kind of being floated out there amongst NFL scouts is the way he throws the football. Mechanically, not very sound. Yeah. He, you know, his base is a little a little wider than usual. More of like the like a like a wide receiver throwing a football, less like a quarterback throwing yeah. a football. And I know people are going to clip this up and probably call me racist, but his mechanics <laughs> don't look ideal, especially when you watch him flip. Now sometimes it's hard to tell when we watch lefties play quarterback. It's like yeah. oh, like it just looks like that because he's left-handed. But then when you do the the mirror flip and you see it, he looks like fuck it. Somebody's out there. Let me just... Yeah, he's he's got a different motion, but I don't think it matters a ton outside of release height because of tip balls and things like that, which he didn't struggle with. Mm -hmm. Like, all you really care about is arm strength, accuracy, and then how how quick his release is. No matter how you throw it, you can throw it like Uncle Rico. Yeah. If you have a strong arm, you're accurate, and the ball comes out. Well, Phillip Rivers. Yeah, right. Like, And, I mean, guys like Tebow got killed for their, their throwing motion because it was such a long release. And mm -hmm. it's like, dude, you don't have time for all that wind-up bullshit. Like, you got to get the ball out. I think Michael Penix Jr. gets the ball out. It just looks a little funny. But yeah. I also grew up in the era where Bernie Kosar was my favorite quarterback. And that motherfucker threw the ball like like a softball pitcher. Yeah, he really he really did kind of have, what? have a weird motion. I can't Weird lie. as hell. With Tebow, I think the long motion was bad because when that ball came out, you never know if you were going to get a spiral or a punt. Yeah, oh, like that's true. That, that and was it a took a while. Thing. Yeah, it took a while. Like Jameis Winston was able to get away with that long release because it always looks pretty leaving his hands. Yeah. Is there a real comp out there for Michael Penix? Like, I think most of the other quarterbacks in this class, we can come up with some sort of comp. No, I don't have a good one for him. But for Penix, I don't have a single one. Uh, but I'll tell you, after Bourbon Ball, maybe I'll have one. Okay. I, I got to I gotta refresh my memory on Michael Penix Jr. because I have, I had my opinion of him. That opinion slid a little bit when I broke down the Michigan game, and I, I believe that's unfair, so that's why I'm going to break down another one mm -hmm. um, because I don't have one for him right now. Yeah, because like for for Drake May, I mean he's a Justin Herbert clone. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty close. For Caleb Williams, he's somewhere in between Pat Mahomes and Kyler Murray. Yeah, which feels feels weird it's to terrifying. say. Terrifying, but, but it makes sense the more you think about it, right? No, it does. It absolutely does. I mean, I think he's got red flags like Kyler. Mm -hmm. Definitely plays similar to Pat Mahomes, and it's a matter of on that spectrum, where does he fall? Is he leaning Mahomes or leaning the midget? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> for a top five pick, you want to be leaning one way. Well, you'd like him to be solidly, yeah, Pat Mahomes. But for for JJ McCarthy, he's either Brock Purdy or Aaron Rodgers <laughs> somewhere between. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know how to even have a good comp for him. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd have there's to not enough. Of, there's not enough of a sample size for him. No, I think I think JJ has a very high ceiling with a bunch of question marks. Yeah. So a, whatever a, quarterback that was, a bunch of question marks. Did you hear uh, Brian Kelly talking about um, Jaden Daniels in yes. the pro day? We got to play this. Play it for us, Pat. He he is going to be so committed to taking care of himself um, that you don't have to worry about size or he doesn't weigh enough. Uh, Lamar's done a pretty good job with his size. I think uh, Mahomes. I wouldn't consider him a giant because he's going to get the ball out to the playmakers and and make plays uh, for Washington. For Washington. For Washington. Wait a minute. Wait a tick. I thought we didn't know that yet. Wait a second. I think it's pretty much signed, sealed, and delivered. I think I think Caleb Williams is going to go to the Bears. He's going to go to Washington. And then the, the rest of the chips will fall pretty yeah. naturally outside of somebody jumping to three to grab Drake May. Because I think Drake May at three is 
a, a massive get. Oh, that's a easy. That's the easiest pick of the draft. Yeah, easiest. Like whoever has three has the easiest pick of the draft. They may not get their guy, but all three guys have have big upside. Is it the Patriots. I don't have the draft order yeah, in front of me. I think it's the Patriots. Um, and and after Brian Kelly said that, Zach, literally the entire every report. This team's trying to get up to three. This team's trying to get up to three. This team's trying to get up to three. Everybody wants to get up to three now that Brian Kelly said that. Yeah. Um, but Zach, I want to get a quick word from our partner that hit some super chats. So get him in. We'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I've told you a, a hundred times already. The best sheets I've ever owned, ever used. They're sexy, they're comfortable. And the best part is they're temperature controlling, self cooling. These are miracle made sheets. Did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep, sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. Their self cleaning, comfort, and quality are through the roof. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. All you have to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace, trymiracle.com slash menace. To try Miracle Made Sheets today and whatever you're buying from them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code MENACE at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code MENACE to, came, to claim your free three towel piece set and save over 40% off. Trymiracle.com slash menace. Treat yourself, Menace Army. There you go. I've, I've, as I say, no cap, no best, cap. The best sheets I've ever owned for real. All facts, no cap. Get some super chat. So get them in, get them in. Alex, thanks for the five. If our secondary will be as good as we think, would it make sense to run more four three to help against the run? For I'm, Ohio so, State? so my ideal, so the only question is who's coming off the field, right? Cause I think we have three legit corners. And so one of them has to come off the field to play a four, three. They certainly have the athlete to be that third linebacker and still be sound against three wide sets in sunny styles. That would give us an opportunity to see a guy like CJ Hicks on the field, which I'm more than here for, but that means someone comes off the field and you don't want Jordan Hancock off the field right. too much, too he's, often. He's, Cause he's one of your best 11. Yeah. And so the question then, then becomes, are you doing a three man rotation with Davison Hancock and Denzel outside in your four, three package? But the beauty is this. If C.J. Hicks can play, they have all the flexibility in the world. They can go 4-3, then 4-2-5. They can do all of that and be not really lose any athleticism. Yeah. I mean, maybe a slight down tick, but Sonny Styles will be fine in that role. He did it all last year. I think what you're going to see is what Jim Knowles has kind of shown at times, which is against 12 personnel. He'll, he, he usually actually stayed in nickel against 12, and it took heavier personnel sets to get to a three-linebacker set. I think this year could be the year where you see 11 personnel, you'll see nickel, 12 personnel or bigger, you'll see 4-3. So the good thing is, I think they're going to have the pieces to play both. And now they have the complete flexibility to decide week by week what personnel groups they want to roll out a third linebacker, what personnel groups they want to have that third corner. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful situation to be in. Yeah. A lot of NFL coordinators talk about um, when they come to college, one thing to notice is that defenses don't personnel match as often. Yeah. Um, just because they they can't they don't have, they don't have enough players. If you're Ohio State, is this the year where you kind of stick to your personnel matching because you should have the talent? Because like who like who are your best? Like can you even say who's your best group if you go linebacker secondary? Like who who are they? Like like the best like the best group of collection of players you can put out there. I think I think you go two different ways, and I think because of that, you should personnel match everything. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm for personnel matching, but at the same time, I also Jordan Hancock's my. I'm not saying he's the best player, but he's my favorite player on the defense. He really is. He, you lose nothing with him at nickel. That motherfucker is tough, physical, aggressive. Like, I just don't want him off the field unless he's tired to save his legs. Like maybe then you rotate or th throw in some four three. I just don't want him off the field. Now, if you told me he's gonna play outside corner in four three and nickel in four two five, sign me up. Yeah. No, he's real good. I saw the, the PFF grades for last season had Igbenosin as a better run defender than Jordan Hancock. What are your thoughts? He's also good. I know they're the both they're both really good. So that's why I want to ask I, you I, who I do said, you think's a better run defender out of those two? I mean Jordan Hancock is because he was asked to be more critical in the run game. And they asked Davison to be a down corner in the box at times, but just the nature of playing nickel, like you're, 
you're generally more involved in the run game because outside corners generally have a guy to, to carry deep, right? In any kind of one high quarters, any anything except for a cloud corner, they're kind of out of the run game. So I think Jordan Hancock was more involved in the run game assignment-wise. So that's why I think he was more impactful in the run game. But I think Davison was really good in the run game also. Me too. Honestly, my belief is that Jordan's probably better in the run game, and that's why they played him in there because yeah. I think those two guys could have been interchangeable. And remember oh, early sure. in camp – Last year, it was a lot of Jordan Hancock playing outside. Yeah. And then you and I thought, like, oh, wow, like, if if they need to, Ignosin could – I mean, they listed him as safety to start. Yeah. That he could be a really good a nickel. And I think Jordan Hancock being such a good nickel in the run game is why those two play – why they play there. Yeah, I agree. If that makes sense. And then outside of that, it's like if you play – those, if you want those two on the field – and Denzel Burke on the field, and Caleb Downs, and Lathan Ransom, where are you going to fit the three linebackers? Yeah, it's tough. But it's a great problem to have, right? Great. Great problem to have. I think because it's, it's such a good problem to have, I think I'll just personal match everything. Like I'm, like I'm, a, I'm an NFL defense. I, I do think it's going to be team by team, right? Yeah. Like, what do they do in 12? What is their what is their athletic profile in 12? Like, do they have a, a really athletic tight end like Michigan, Colston Loveland? I might choose to go more nickel, right? But at the same I, I say that out of both sides of my mouth. I love the Sunny Styles on Colston Loveland matchup. So right. I don't, I think they have. It's truly like the greatest problem in the world. Both could be very effective, and they get to roll out different packages, different blitzes, and keep the, the offense guessing. And I think that is a, a magnificent thing to have as a defensive coordinator. And also last year, like the not wanting to go heavy could have been because they felt like the DB room was deeper than the linebacker oh, yeah. room. Yeah. Because they were. Oh, by right? far, yeah. Like, they told us all year that C.J. Higgs can't play, which, I, you know, whatever. They told us that nobody could play except for a, a hurt Tommy Eikenberg and a, and a hurt, you know, Steel Chambers. Steel Chambers. So, um, that's a great question, though, Alex. Thank you. I love that kind of question. John, remember John? Wrench John, thanks for the 10. Zach, how do you think Chris would hold up against Kirk Barton in a one-on-one -on -one bull rush situation? If we raise enough money, can we make that happen at Yogi's in the parking lot in a few weeks? I mean, you can't make who's, who's bull rushing. You can't make Chris bull rush Kirk Barton. Like I'm bull rushing. I can't like I, I can't get a move. But it doesn't matter either way. If he's bull rushing or you're bull rushing, uh, that's an easy choice. Kirk Barton is a fucking mountain of a man. Yeah. Like, and he's all American tackle and still looks like one. He played the sport. Yeah. Chris didn't, <laughs> right? Chris has now. If you let Chris like pass rush, speed rush, maybe counter spin move, he might have a chance. I'll just do what everybody did against Josh Fryer. I'll run a go route. <laughs> go, <laughs> Stacy. Thanks for the five. Uh, good to see you again this weekend, Coach. Congrats to Quinn and her teammates on a good weekend. See you in Columbus in a few weeks. Hell yeah, that's my guy. It was going. Did you see uh, Danny Cano? No, I, 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 and I, I forgot about it the first day. And the second day, I was like, I wonder where he is. Like, I don't even know. I don't know where he's, where he lives. I, yeah. There was no way to like actually look for him. But to I, me, Danny Canal is just Florida. Yeah. So I, I have no idea. Um, there, I didn't even see any teams from Florida. There was a bunch of Texas teams, um, obviously Illinois teams, St. Louis teams. I mean, there was teams from all over Kansas, but, um, I, I, I didn't, I didn't see them. Do you and Danny have beef at all? No, no, I don't no. even know him. Got you. I, I mean, just, I, I just remember some of the cover. I didn't like some of the, some of those guys said some weird shit talking about uh, like Joe Burrow was only possible because of the transfer portal. Yeah, it's like yeah. I, I mean, he. I honestly don't remember. I, there's a good chance I might have fucking had it out with him on Twitter or something. I don't remember. Well, it's just because Joe Burrow never actually wasn't a transfer portal guy. He was a grad transfer, so it's just a, right. It was a funny thing to say. Yeah, but I don't know if that was him. I don't either. Corey, thanks for the five. Was good, y'all. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. You too, Corey. Appreciate you. I love seeing you in there, Corey. I, really I will do. say, though, Chris, I mean, we're in Chicago, so not that five and a half hours away. Bunch of Menace Army there. Oh, it's going? Oh, a bunch. Did a you bunch. fly or drive? We flew. That's okay. why I got a flight got delayed two and a half hours. I got home at 3 a.m. last night. And, you know, I hadn't seen Justine in three days. So what comes with that? It was it was a late <laughs> night. <It laughs> what late comes night. with that is fucking hilarious, bro. But, but, but also, Chris, the other, this shit is so cool. So shout out to the Army. I call to find out when my son's uh, physical therapy is. And I was like, hey, Zach Smith, my son Cameron, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to figure out what, because I know he has it today. I think it's it's actually, we, I got to leave right after the show and go get him and take him. And the dude was like, yeah, it's this time, this time. I was like, I appreciate it. He was like, no problem, menace. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> Caught me off guard. Bro, like, always double take when that happens. Always. He was like, no problem, menace. 
a fucking physical therapist at Ohio Health. <laughs> yeah, I was joining a gym in Akron, bro. New gym. And someone said, what's up, menace? Like, as I'm, like, registering, I'm like, oh. I oh, fuck with the army, man. That's heavy. Really cool. It's really cool. MC, thanks for the five. The hype on Jeremiah Smith is real. OMG. I saw two clips of this alien moss. Everyone, this kid needs to start. Dude, I, I think anyone that has watched the show from 2019 until now knows that I am sometimes, like, negatively the bearer of truth you're like the wet blanket recruit right where people are just so excited like oh my god cj hicks and gabe powers are going to start as freshmen and i'm like well you guys fucking relax like they're high school recruits just because i did it for 15 years i've seen this story before five star best player ever comes in and there's a learning curve this is the first time ever there ain't no fucking learning curve that kid is Grown man, real deal, start as a freshman, fucking fire a little bit of money on the Bolitnikov type of player. And I'm not even overstating it. Dude could be a monster. Yeah, bro. We went from, we had a discussion a couple months ago about like how much will he rotate in to don't rotate that boy out. No, like, no. He's not going anywhere. He's the best in the room as a true freshman. That's, what are we, and a, it's a loaded room. Yeah. It's, Wild. It's actually, it, it's insane to think about it. We're going to talk about him a little bit uh, more later. Jam, thanks for the two. Chris looks like a little guy next to Zach. Yeah, yeah Chris has a little different, and we probably need to work with our cameras. Chris has it's, a little little downward angle. I got a more head-on angle. Chris is smaller than me, but he's I not am. that small. It's fine. I am five, two and a half, a buck, <laughs> a buck 20. <laughs> Bro, sorry. Thanks for the two. A, I'm repping Grand Rapids too. The Let's GR. go. Man, all these GR love, we might have to go out there for a remote. Hey, I'm down. I mean, there's no, is there, there's no like college football team in GR though. No, which is the issue. <laughs> Gorky, thanks for the two. LSU plus three and a half to go with Purdue money line. Then USC plus three and a half single. You know, I almost, I almost talked about Purdue with you, and I almost brought the clip up of bro talking about he's been overlooked his whole life. The Zach Eddy dude. Um, dude, I'm so glad you didn't. But he had a forty. He had a forty burger extra cheese yeah i know he's yeah. very effective but he's the worst athlete to ever be this biggest celebrity in a sport like just a bad athlete bro i well i almost brought it up because there's like there's a clip of him going viral right now of uh, uh him escorting a girl into a room and there's like there's like five girls just waiting outside the room for him <laughs> and they're all like oh he picked her he picked her <laughs> yeah they said he's about to go for 50 next game but it was funny just hearing him talk about like he said, I kept getting looked over. And then my guy, Dog, put a thing out saying, boy, you are 7'4". No one looked over you. Like, what do you mean? He's been all they talk about in college basketball for like two years. Yeah. And what do you mean looked over? <laughs> maybe looked around. Yeah, like looked past maybe, but looked over. Like, bitch, no one can see over you. The, right. The hell? Like, bro, he's 7'4", and he played high school basketball for IMG. I'm not, like, I hear, like, maybe he feels like he was a little under-recruited. But some... I'm not going for the underdog story, bro. 7'4", no. at IMG is crazy. Yeah, come on now. This is some Kirby smart shit. They Which all doubted us. Like, what? Everyone thought you were going to repeat. What are you talking about? <laughs> Said doubted. What you, like, you averaged 30 a game for IMG. Like, right. who, who doubted you? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> but now he really is. He's really been like Yao Ming out there. Um, ben, thanks for the five. I want to nominate Kurt Ben Kurt for dumbass sports media person of the week, comparing Drake May's hype to Christian Hackenberg. That's that's wild. And the problem is this week there's a lot of candidates. Yeah. Well, who else is a candidate? Well, let's. Funny you should ask, Chris. Oh, you got it in the bag. You I mean, these are the just bag. these are just some of the fun things I saw this weekend. Bro, the crazy thing is, no one thought Christian Ackerberg like leading into the draft was going to be a top five pick. They said it before, like before you saw a full body of whatever from him. Yes. Oh, you got some you got some bookmarks in there. Oh, I got all kinds of shit. I think my favorite is uh, was Andrew Smith, who is oh. an eleven Warriors beat writer. Um, he's. He's a faker, bro. He's got 11 Warriors, 247, and, oh, uh, and rivals. He's been faking for a while. Kevin Noon called him out, and he said, they, Kevin Noon said, can you please take that out of your bio? He said, no. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I dislike the guy, but he literally <laughs> said breaking news and then just copy and pasted the, the tweet that we put out about Carlos, Carlos Lachlan mm -hmm. and used the same picture we used. Yeah, <laughs> like, bro. just – Word for word verbatim. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, Maybe is, he's not a Soldier dumbass. What Boy say? He copied my whole fucking flow. <laughs> he copied my whole flow. <laughs> Matt DeBlazy, whoever the fuck that guy is, some Oregon guy, he said he, he was all over. I mean, just all under my my 
that tweet mm -hmm. just like talking about how it's a lie it's for clicks it's like okay dude yep you're right then my guy matt zenitz is the number one national college football reporter for 247 sports and cbs sports little square looking motherfucker um he decided to announce today that ohio state is finalizing a deal with oregon to no mention and i don't i don't just let's keep in mind i don't care i don't care if we get credit I don't care if we break news. I don't care if people listen. I just put it out so the army knew who was getting hired. I could give two shits about anything else. But I think it's funny when they use a term like breaking news. And I'm like, bitch, I told you that two days ago. That is not breaking. And you ain't break it. Like, it's just <laughs> funny to me. I, yeah, I think I think I think our intern cares more about you getting credit than more oh, than anybody else, sure. and I love it. But bro, I I got a whole bunch of like bookmarks and retweets after the, you know you you put that out there. Cap, he already signed an extension with Oregon. Nice try, Chief. This is fake, dude. Locke just signed an extension last week. Nice bait. This one's great. Seek help. He ain't leaving. Another great one. If you believe this, seek help. <laughs> seek help. Well, we have your help. Come watch our show. Yeah. We tell you. The truth. This one's great. He even tagged the coach and put the Pinocchio thing up the there. Pinocchio saying, liar. Liar. <laughs> liar. <laughs> All right. Just wait till Coach Locke is in scarlet and gray, bitches. <laughs> Who's lying now? I love it. I love it. Not lying day. <laughs> yeah, that's actually crazy that that nickname stuck. Uh, shout out to the guys over there. Third base investigator. Thanks for the five. Why can't pro athletes stop doing stupid shit? Rice racing and crashing in Dallas. Like, what the fuck? Did you see the footage of that? Yes. Idiots. Fucking idiots. I don't know. I don't know why. But I, my, I mean, just like, obviously, complete shitbag. Mm -hmm. Like, racing like that on the highway. D total disregard for anyone else in, in his own in their own lives. And then they, like, jump out of the car, grab the bag of allegedly had a bunch of guns, and they, like, ran away. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Is this GTA? Like, yeah. what just happened? Are you going to... Are you going to steal a cop car next? Yeah, they thought that shit was really GTA. Though. For real. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Have better circles, please. Carson, thanks for the five. Me and the fam are going to the spring game. Are y'all going? We, I'm not. Um, we have a, a volleyball tournament at the convention center in Columbus that weekend. Uh, we're doing our live show April 12th, though, the day before. Yeah. Doors open at 11. Yogi's on hard road here in, in Dublin. Come hang out. We'll be there at 11. The show's at noon, obviously, just like always. And then we're going to hang out afterwards for a while. Hopefully my daughter has, like, PM wave and I can still catch the games. But if I got to miss the games Friday, it is what it is. And then Saturday, I'll be at the convention center. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be cool, man, because that weekend, we're doing our meetup on Friday, and then Buckeye Scoop's doing there on Saturday. So, yeah. like, everybody can I meet everybody. That. Yeah. So, uh, just should, should be a really good weekend for everyone coming in town for the spring game. And honestly, is because Devin Brown's healthy, is this a more anticipated spring game than last year? I mean, yeah, probably. Because last year, like, it was, like, there was some anticipation for wait, it. Wait, Devin Brown still plays quarterback at Ohio State? No, no, no. Oh, that's weird. I, he plays. He plays. I watched all the beat shows after the scrimmage, and I never heard him talk about him. Yeah. No, he's actually a small forward at Old Tangy Orange. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Got it. I I, I thought there was that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. He's already. He's actually already in the portal. He's been in the portal for a year and a half. So just waiting. Sorry. Here's a. I, I, I just thought of this. Here's a. Here's a fun question. Let's pretend. Let's play make believe. Devin Brown enters the portal after spring ball. Who lands at a better spot, Kyle McCord at Syracuse or wherever Devin Brown lands? Absolutely Devin Brown. That's wild, right? That's the guy that beat him out goes yeah. to Syracuse. Where's I, I'm curious. I want the chat to tell me. If Devin Brown did transfer, who would land at a better spot? Kyle McCord obviously landed at Syracuse or Devin Brown? Devin Brown. <laughs> like, with, without a doubt. <laughs> Um, MCU, thanks for the five. Speaking of Uncle Rico, new Michigan quarterback Jaden Davis has that exact same throwing motion. Good thing he's a handoff specialist. No, you're not going to do Jaden Davis like that. Jaden Davis has a nice throwing motion. I don't know anything about Jaden Davis. I've heard of him. Chris talked about him a couple times. I like him. But I do know they're high on Alex Orgy in Ann Arbor right now. Are they? Oh, yeah. Oh. Like, like really high. The originator getting it done. They're high on orgies in Ann Arbor. Yeah, we got Megatron and originators. Man. The original orgy. That's fine, I guess. I, I am shocked by that, actually. Yeah, I was kind of surprised I, I as well. I am really shocked by that because I don't know. Like, I don't know how often quarterbacks' completion percentage goes up once they get to college from but high school. I'm going to go up and watch a spring game, so I'll tell you what I what I really okay. think. Oh. You know, it's one of those things. It's not the spring game, a spring practice. Spring practice, yeah. I got meant to tell you, we got another spring game or spring practice invite that I just forgot to mention, and I'll mention it during commercial break because we're about to fire one of those. 
We'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I got a life hack alert. They came to us a couple months ago and I started using them. I got a family of six. Chaos like crazy. If you want stress-free meals this spring, check out Factor. They're delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every uh, every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. And they're freaking delicious, man. They are so good. There's over 35 options, calorie smart, keto. You name the diet, you can find a meal that fits. Chef-prepared meals on your table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals. Gourmet meals, they have premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini. And asparagus. I didn't even know what broccolini was before I before I got my first one. No fuss, no mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the, the, the savor the good stuff. Tailor to your schedule. Customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much as you or as little as you need. Pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. All you have to do is head over to factormeals.com slash menace50 and use code menace50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code MENACE50 at factormeals.com. Go check it out. Hey, they are, they are really good. I mean, I'm not bullshitting you. Like, fucking good-ass food. Um, Over the weekend, a lot of talk about Jamar Chase and his long-term deal that he can negotiate here at any point. And I guess it's on the back burner because they want to see if Justin Jefferson becomes available or if he gets an extension with the Vikings. There's no way the league lets these two get together, right? No, 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 no. I don't think they're going to let him get together. I think I think Jamar Chase is like, nah, I'm going to let him reset the market, and then I'm going to reset the market a second time. This is one of those, like, I could restructure now. Nah, I'm going to wait. I guess I was thinking, oh, if Justin doesn't get an extension, I'll take a cheap deal so we can all be here together. Nah. I mean, that'd be cool, but nah. He's he's sitting there saying, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. I, I definitely want to do a long-term deal. <laughs> Text, text, uh, Jetta. Yeah. Hey, bro, how close are you? Hey, we're like a month away. All right, bet. Let's meet in five weeks. <laughs> Get as much as possible. Yeah. You reset that market, big dog, because I'm about to dunk on that contract. <laughs> Here's a fun stat for you, Zach. Most 200 plus yard receiving games the last six seasons. Amari Cooper and Tyree Kill tied for first with three. Jamar Chase with two. And that those are the only three receivers to do it more than once. Yeah. Impressive. I never would have guessed that. No. Especially with Amari Cooper's uh, quarterback play. Yeah. So, shout out to him. And I guess um, also, this is just some good news for you. Um, what's it called? Deshaun Watson's on pace oh, to good. be back for the season. I didn't know if that was even a question. but I, I mean, at some point he has to play. But yeah. good to know, I guess. I mean, one of one of these days you would think that maybe he'll, he'll suit up and play. Um, this from Matt LaFleur. I thought this was interesting. He was shocked by the release of running back Aaron Jones. He said it had happened all so fast. He didn't know all the details and what was involved in all those conversations. Zach, are you surprised that he was surprised, or do you think I mean, he's bullshitting and trying to save face? Uh, it could be any of the above, but but this is the NFL for you, and that's why I have such a problem with the league because now Matt Lafleur obviously is not on any type of hot seat right, right. now. But how are you going to judge a coach based on the team's performance on the field when personnel decisions are be- being made and he's in the dark, like doesn't even know about it, like? Kind of, I always go back to Matt Rule in Carolina because Matt Rule is a friend of mine. But like, we expected him to win. They never gave him a quarterback. Yeah, and like, then we were gonna chastise and put Matt Rule his feet to the fire. But like, it's not entirely his fault, and I just hate that. I think if you're the head coach, you need to be the CEO. You need to be the the final say in personnel decisions. You need to be in charge of everything, so that if it fails, it is your fault. And there's no other way to cut the cake. And like right now, if Green Bay goes out and sucks, the run game sucks, it's like he can sit there and be like, yeah, you you got rid of my fucking running back, you douche. Also, the timing of it is so bizarre because you would think that if you're the Packers, why wouldn't you try to get out in front so you could go get another running back? Yeah. Like it feels like the, the timing of it definitely, definitely wasn't ideal. And I always feel for coaches to kind of go through this, but Matt Rule is the number one example. Like Matt Rule with that <laughs> offensive line, he was gifted, what, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and said, go make the playoffs with Christian McCaffrey. And that's it. That's <laughs> all we're going to give you. Go make the playoffs. Oh, and we're going to draft J.C. Horn, yeah. our corner. And my belief, I don't know how you feel about corners in the NFL draft. My belief is this. If you are a team picking in the top 10, 
you do not draft corner. That's a luxury position. If you're in the top 10, you go get someone who is around the football. I'm talking quarterback, offensive lineman, pass rusher. Those should be your first three yeah. if you're doing there. Now, if you have all three of those figured out beyond anything, and if you have, only if you have all three of those figured out, you go corner. And also, to say that J.C. Horner is the number one corner ahead of pass certain is, is nuts wild. in and of itself. Wild. But I don't, I don't do you do you agree with like if you are a team? Yeah, you need to have your foundation built. The foundation should always be quarterback, offensive line, and then some form of pass rush. Absolutely. Right. Now I think corners fourth, so it's not far off. Like if you get a true lockdown corner and you can build a good secondary, look at what the, what the Browns did with Denzel Ward. Like, oh no, I agree. And, and, but they had to have Miles Garrett, right? You had to have that pass rusher, right? And then the corner, if you get a lockdown corner, all of a sudden that pass rusher has an extra. 0.2 seconds to get home. It's it's all a, a process, but they had none of it, mm -hmm. and they went corner. That's just asinine. It's just like I'm I'm gonna ask. It's like NFL franchises are like houses. All right, let's let's build this house, but I want to start with the upstairs bathroom. That's what the corner is for me. Yeah. Like, do you need a bathroom in your house? Absolutely. Upstairs bathroom, great. You need you need one, but dog. We just bought this plot of land. Why are you bringing me a fucking bathtub? Right. Like, like right. go bring me pipes. And what are the pipes? Quarterbacks, offensive line. Like, bring me that. Yeah, pour a solid foundation so it doesn't crack and this house is sturdy. That's your offensive line, right? Like, like you brought me a cardboard box and said, here, put a bathtub in this. This is your house. <laughs> like, because that's what Sam Darnold is. But, hey. You can take a nice bath. You just don't have running water. You don't have the, you don't have the water. You, you don't have, have the water, water for the bath. You, you don't have anything. So for me, I always I always feel for a lot of these coaches because they end up getting raw, raw into the deal. Like we saw it with Mike Vrabel. Like Mike, and, and it's funny because now in circles, people know like Mike Vrabel is a good football coach. Yeah. Mike Vrabel, we don't know how he's a personnel decision because he didn't he didn't get to make them. Yeah, see, and that's that's my problem. I, I think I don't think that's the model for success. And I know mm -hmm. some teams like it's like Belichick and Scott Pioli when they originally built the Patriots, like Belichick still was the guy that made the call. Now he he had a, a personnel guy in Scott Pioli who he like trusted entirely, and they together built that roster. But like he still had the final say, mm -hmm. and that's why he got paid the most. Yeah. So I don't know. I I, I struggle with it um, a good amount. Zach went into super chats and then get to some other talk. Here we go, Mike. Thanks for the five. Yo, the Oregon faithful is hurt. Bro's story is a Netflix documentary, home home run, wait, documentary series, home run, motherfuckers. <laughs> Flex I do think it's a good hire. We're going to talk about it after, probably after the break or right before the break. Yeah. But um, yeah, Oregon fans were down bad. Like, and I just put it out there and it was like, I don't understand. I mean, I guess I understand. No one, no one had talked about it yet. Like, no, that was not even on anyone's radar when yeah. I got, when I got the text that like that, it was, it was done. I mean, they didn't have a signed contract, but it was done. He agreed to it. He was coming. It was happening. They're just waiting on the contracts to be, to be penned. And, um, no one talked about it. So if you're an Oregon fan, you're like, what? He just, and he did just get an extension. He like, did. that's all true. Like if I was on the outside looking in, I'll be like, oh yeah, you're full of shit. Yeah. Like, right. I, I, like I would, I would say that, but like the animosity, like, yeah, you need, you need to get help. Like what? Yeah, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't need help. I like just, even if I'm wrong, I don't need to seek help. Right. Let's definitely. be very clear. The timing of it is wild too, though. With the extension, mm -hmm. it does. It does really. It does really make you wonder. My favorite has been like some of the sites starting to talk about it, saying that this was like he was one of their their top choices, <laughs> which I'm sure he's a good football coach. Like you know, whatever that is, that is kind of one of the, one of the funny things um, that was out there. So Brian, thanks for the five. What, which city do you think will be next to have an NFL team? Will it be a city outside of the U S they're really pushing for that? Like Mexico city or, I mean, they've, you know, they're playing all over the globe. I think it, it it's not going to be like Europe or anything mm -hmm. crazy. Um, you can't do the travel. It had to be like no. fucking what Toronto makes I would sense. tell you the city, the city that I think would, I mean, I know they had one, and we played volleyball in the stadium, and it's a shithole because they haven't done anything to it. But St. Louis, I mean, that, oh yeah, that's a big city. They're built for it. I mean, it's. I would imagine at some point they want to get one back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'd have to really think about who doesn't have one as we sit here, though. Yeah, you know, I, I think Akron should have one. Oh my god, they have a big enough stadium. They have, you know, they have big enough population. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> uh, well, you know, they definitely don't. But I, I, I would, and I want Moorhead to be the coach of that team. It'd be cool if Chicago had an NFL team. I'd pick Akron over Chicago. 
I mean, because I don't know what the Bears are, but it's not a real NFL oh, team. Oh, damn. In my head, I was like, they don't have an NFL team, do they? Yeah. Right. Yeah, That's like, what I mean. Yeah. I was in Chicago like, damn, this would be a good NFL market yeah. if they actually had a real NFL team. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's funny as hell. Mir, thanks for the two. Iggy taking that step, question mark. Is Iggy the most disrespected starting corner at Ohio State the last well, three for, or four years? I mean, for, for good, good reason. reason. Okay. Like, he he plays – I mean, he's 80, – 80% of the time, he's fucking outstanding. Ten mm percent -hmm. of the time, you're like, mm, I'd like him to do better, and then ten percent of the time, you're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> like just got cooked on a, in the red zone for a touchdown. So like, it's there. He's just got to create that dominance, right? Eliminate those ten percents. The ten percent of plays where it's not a great play. If he gets rid of those, he'll be a, a outstanding corner. You know why I love Iggy? Because of his attitude. Because in a world of Cam Martinez's, when you get beat and someone just running past you and you're out of the frame, when he gets beat, he'll tackle you. Yeah, he's still right there. Like, he's always close enough to tackle you. Every catch which, he gave up, he was close enough to tackle you. Yeah, which, which matters, right? Yeah. Like, some guys get cooked. Other guys just lose a rep. And mm -hmm. there's a big difference. And I'm okay with guys losing reps. That's actually crazy. I'm okay with guys. That call's nuts, dog. Oh, okay. I thought you were showing up. I was like, don't you, you fucking do that. Um, when when I think when guys get beat at Ohio State for a single rep, it's like the sky's falling almost. Like, mm -hmm. I remember one time right after a pick, Iggy got beat, and someone was like, that's, that's your man. It feels like he gets burned all the time. I'm like, damn, that was a good ball to a tight window. Yeah, he, he, he lost, but I'm not going to expect every single player to come through here to be Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I'm, I, it's just not probable. It's not possible. You're also playing against D1 athletes. So I'm an Iggy guy. Um, you know, do I think he's better, a better cover corner than Jermaine Matthews? I don't know. Do I like Iggy being on the team? Yeah. Do I like his attitude? Yeah. Do I like the fact that he'll get he'll get called for a holding or a PI before a touchdown? Absolutely. fucking loop. Oh, tackle that motherfucker. Don't go go give him six. Give him fifteen. That's what I'm saying. Like, could you imagine if someone just would have tackled Cornelius Johnson on that on that double move from from the slot? That'd be sweet. That'd have been awesome. Yeah, we would have taken it. So, but, and also I've never seen Iggy just get like burned, right? Yeah. Like you ever seen anybody like, like any catch that he's given up, is anybody running away from him? No. Mike, thanks for the five. I know you're a member, bro. I don't know what's going on with the tube. I'm a member, but it's not showing up in the chat. Fuck. Yeah, that's bullshit. It definitely is. John, thanks for the five member, John. Just messing with you, Chris, about Bo Rush and my guy, Kirk Barton. Just excited for the meetup. Nah, I mean, I, I would, I would do a rep if he did a rep. Um, as, as me as the receiver, Zach is the quarterback. Oh, so he's got to cover you. Yeah, you think I can get open against Kirk Barton? You better go deep. <laughs> I'll run a slant. No, you get yeah, well. If he gets hands on, he's getting paws on you. Yeah. You're, you're stuck. If he gets paws on, it's over. I need to motion. That's got to that's got to be one of those where your release is like whoop. Just run as fast as you can away from him. I need a motion beforehand. Yeah, like shoot me across the formation. Like, no, I'm talking arena league. Like motion, <laughs> motion towards him. Like like the running stars. Yes. Which I'm still shocked that it hasn't resulted in more injuries. Because if I'm on defense, I'm going to run a start too. We're just going to collide. <laughs> uh, General Crone, thanks for the 20. You ever seen a fan base so desperate for recognition to be considered one of the big boys in college football? Then the eight mile gigolos up north. From the fake national champs to immediately irrelevant, please take our title seriously. Yeah, it's been a wild three months up in Ann Arbor. Wild. They have been real loud. Um, there's all the grumblings today that Mason Graham may be portal coming from kind of the Michigan side of Twitter. I don't okay. know. I, I don't know what's April Fool's and what's not. It's not happening. So quit asking. <laughs> I can finish sentences. But it, if it did, if it did, people are going to have a lot to say about Buckeye Scoop, bro. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if Buckeye Scoop continues to prove they have better sources than people like Sam Webb, oh, goodness. At what point do the Michigan fans start to turn on Samuel? I don't know, but this obviously is is this is a Midwest show, very very yeah. Ohio State state centric, just because of my background and where we are. But don't let me go to a couple of spring practices and get entrenched in that program. I'll have all the shit, and and it, the only thing I will do with it is try to fucking dunk on Sam Web Scam Web every day, bro. If he saw you at a practice break, you think he would say hello? Or you think he'd like fuck no? Okay, I was just curious. he'd probably be sick that I was sitting in the coaches' meetings though. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. That would be crazy. Our Barlow, thanks for the two. The linebackers need to bring back the Legion of Boom. Yeah. Yeah, but what's the last like time oh, you said, oh shit, at a linebacker hit? I agree. I would just take the Legion of Athleticism, but Legion yeah. of Boom would be nice also. 
You like the hip tackle still? Or are we out on that? We want dudes to just go blow somebody up. I think the hip tackle is a pussy tackle. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a cool little like thing. No, I want someone to get fucking boomed. Like, like yeah. I think the last like big hit we had at linebacker, maybe Pete Pete Warner. Yeah, maybe Going back twenty twenty when yeah. he boomed Trevor. Yeah, I don't know. Been a minute. I mean, this is too fucking long. Pete Warner's about to be up for his next contract in the league. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how you slice it. Charlotte Buckeyes, thanks for the ten. Jordan da- Jaden Davis is from Charlotte, and he sucks. No way, y'all are not gonna do this, bro. Y'all. Are I mean, not- listen, I'm not. I don't know anything about the kid. He might be fucking awful, but he was Ryan Day's top priority. So, hey, like he's a, what's that say? Like he's a good player. Like he plays in, in a good division through for 3,500 yards, had 30 touchdowns, I think. Like, like looked apart, feels apart. I like JD, man. I'm not gonna let them. Not gonna let them kill him. I like him. I don't know anything about him. Percy, thanks for the five. I think he's better than Aaron Nolan. Percy, thanks for the five. Can y'all bring the show that, to Akron? We rock with you. We don't know anybody in Akron to, to hook us up. No plugs, no connects in the 330. Percy, where in Akron you be? Like, where, where are you at? Where yeah, you- if you could tell me a good place to do it. The I one mean, guy I do know from Akron just never really has a good spot to do it. I mean, honestly, I stay in the house. So. Right. <laughs> he's like, we can do it at, at the house. Like, Chris, that defeats the purpose. I mean, we can have a house party. You really want to do that? <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not. That just terrifies me. But no, we can do it at uh, at, Ac- at LeBron spot. Oh. They have like the three three zero day, but I don't know if you're banned from in there. They might, I probably they banned might have from you there. on a ban list. <laughs> Cole, thanks for the two rules. Got a real QB this year, Rayola time. I'll be honest, I, I haven't obviously dove completely into the Nebraska spring practices, but I've seen an, I've seen enough to know the kid can spin it. Yeah, he and really he- can. He's got a big arm. He's got a, he's big, got a arm. big arm. I mean, he, and he should. He looks like a fucking lineman. Good <laughs> God, if you don't have a big arm and you're that fucking big, what are you doing? You say that, bro, but we have one of those at Ohio State right now. Who? Bro, Will Howard does not have a big arm, but he's a big dude. True. Um, no, I'm excited. You know, I'm not usually on the bandwagon of, like, true freshman starting quarterback. I don't think you can do it day one for a national contender. But the good news for Nebraska and Matt Rule is they're not a contender. Like, this is the highest yeah, ranked recruit they've ever Gotten. Yeah, and he, he baptism by fire. He may struggle this year, goes through some freshman right. growing pains, but you're at Nebraska. And if, yeah. with a freshman quarterback, everyone's just going to be excited about what that looks like in, two, in, in a year or two. Yeah, and I don't even think it's a – is it much of a competition right now? Because I know he threw their pro day. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think he, he walked in and they were like, oh, a guy that can throw it. You win. <laughs> well, well, the Purdy kid played well down the stretch for them, but then he got hurt and transferred. And I think if he would have been there, then they could have had a competition and done it like Lamar Jackson's freshman year. Yeah, yeah. Where they kind of were back and forth. Not to compare Rayo to Lamar. I was like, bro, that's just just because I was situationally. Like, yeah, I was thinking about a smaller school that's not a contender that wears red. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Mello, member Mello, thanks for the 10. Uh, way to get it first at Zach Smith. Keep it up, bro. We need it. Menace to sports and scoop. Everyone else can kick rocks. OH. Buckeye, Buckeye, I.O. It's 12:51, and Michigan still sucks. Jamie French silently committed, according to Scoop. It's natty season. Hey, it's it's looking natty or bust. It really is. But you know what's funny? And I, I've, I've been thinking about in the media world a lot. The two most hated platforms in kind of the Ohio State realm are like us and Buckeye Scoop. Yeah. But we're also the two that do the best numbers consistently. Yeah. And so it makes it confusing. Is it like just the small majority just loud about hating us? Or are we just overall hated? Or do the people that hate us watch us? Like, I, do we do like do we lead everybody in hate watchers? No, what I think it is, is we have real motherfuckers, like alphas, male and female, like bad bitches and alpha males. That are Buckeye fans, or really, I mean, we have a ton of Michigan fans. We, mm-hmm. all, we do. I mean, Buckeye Scoop is definitely Buckeye fans. But they rock with our show, and people like Buckeye Scoop, because we just say what we think, and there's no narrative, there's no bullshit. And then you have the beta bitch boys, who hold on to a narrative. Zach Smith beat his wife out. Why do you give him a platform? Or like yeah. Kirk Barton watched practice film one time. It's like, take your whiny, soft ass the fuck over there and watch their show. We don't want you over here. At all. I don't want the numbers to go up if that's who's coming. I want the numbers to stay right where they are. Take your soft ass over there and watch that bullshit. It's just wild, though, because you would think, like, the amount of hate we got, like, we would stop getting pushed in the algorithm because, like, we should have a, a wave of dislikes. Yeah, like, but the there's, way, hey, in here. there's way too many people that like real shit. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair and real. 
So like the video, I guess 2,700 people in here. Hey, like the video while we're here. We got to get a commercial break in. Twenty Over 2,700 people in here. I need 2,700 likes right now. We appreciate you. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army. You know I'm a pouch guy. I found the best pouches on the market, and they're, they are made by a company called Lucy. They're made for your nicotine routine and delivered straight to your door. 100% pure nicotine, always tobacco-free. You can choose your form, pouches, breakers, which have the little juice infusion, or gum. They have all three options. You can choose your strength, 2 milligrams to 12 milligrams. If you don't use if you don't use nicotine very much, 2 milligrams will suit you. If you need a little kick because it's not working for you, all the way up to 12 milligrams, the most I've seen on the market. There's mint, apple ice, espresso, mango, a ton of flavor options, and they're outstanding. I use them every day. Save yourself from the weekly gas station stop and sign up for a monthly subscription and get 15% off. I already mentioned the Lucy Breakers. They have a tiny capsule inside. You just bite it, flavor instantly. They're outstanding. My favorite Lucy flavor is the mango. I think they're out, they're just amazing. All you have to do is level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co forward slash menace and use promo code menace to get 20% off your first order. Lucy already offers free shipping, has a 30-day refund policy. If you change your mind, all you got to do is lucy.co and use code menace to get 20% off free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age, and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Go check them out. It'll change your pouch game. Man, tell Chris to get out the shot. <laughs> you just see Chris just go, lean in there like, hey, yo, it's time to go. What are we doing? Yeah, like, what's going on? All right, uh, we're, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Zach, big story, big news, the breaking news in Columbus. Carlos Lachlan is the new um, Ohio State running back coach. I'm just going to let you have the floor and have your flowers because you put out a tweet and it got some people mad. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what to say about it. I mean, it's, it's just – it's kind of like everything else we've ever said on here. It's just I found out that he was going to be the running back coach. And I was like – and initially I was like, oh, that'll be great on Monday. Mm -hmm. And then I searched Twitter. I searched the internet. No one was saying it. And I'm like – Certainly people know about it because I got it from someone at Ohio State. And guess what Ohio State has? They have a pipeline through Austin Ward's asshole to get out there what's going on inside the Woody, right? They drive the narrative like a big dildo right through Austin Ward's asshole. And that's what happens. And I was like, well, why hasn't Austin Ward put it out yet? Like, what's the reason? So then I'm like, oh, there must be a reason. I'm a dunk on this motherfucker. So I put it out. Mainly because I wanted the Army to know that this is going to be the new running back coach. And so the, that's the story everyone will be talking about is how this guy's the new running back coach. No one will give us credit. I just Someone just sent me Bill Rabinowitz and Columbus Dispatch did a whole article just now about it. No mention that we put it out on Saturday. Don't give a shit. I like Bill Rabinowitz. Not a problem. I'm not looking for clout or mentions. I do think it's funny that don't say his name. Say my name, bitch. Say it. Look at me. I'm the captain now. Say my name. But it's, it is what it is. But I am curious. Why did Ohio State not want it out there yet? Yeah. That's the question I have. Why were they trying to bury the story? I was told for three or four days until it, 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 it wasn't going to come out for three or four days. And I want to know why. Like, what for what reason? Because who's the, who, Chris knows, who's the recruit that loved this guy, Carlos Lock? Oh, uh, the, the Davidson kid, Jordan Davidson. Yeah, he from, from apparently he loved this guy at Oregon. Not, it wasn't a huge fan of Oregon or going to Oregon, but he loved this running back coach. Now this running back coach gets hired at Ohio State, obviously loved Ohio State. Now it's a, a nice marriage. You would think they'd want this out there for recruiting and everything yeah. else. I'm confused why they were trying to, like, keep it hush-hush. And the running back was here this weekend, too. Right. So, like... The, the 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 rumor or the belief now is that it has something to do with the the buyout dropping on April first. Could that be why? Like you don't. Want I mean, I no, because you just don't hire them till April first. But you can still leak it out there through your beat. Like, it, it doesn't like why is it so hush hush that you can't even have mention of his right, name? Right. Like before. rumor is like nothing. Like we put out there, just waiting on. Here's here was a tweet that I, I wrote it. Just waiting for the ink to dry. New running back coach is finalizing his new contract in Columbus because that's true. That's what was happening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the fact that he can sign that contract on April 1st and have a less of a buyout. It doesn't change anything. The only reason I could think of that they wanted to keep it hush-hush is they didn't want Dan Lanning to know and be able to counter like Oklahoma did with DeMarco Murray and come off the top rope and dunk over top of him because Oregon has money and retain him. That's the only reason I could think of. But yeah. then I was like, 
that doesn't make sense either because if you're sure. Carlos Lachlan, what are you going to do? You're going to tell Dan Lanning and see if he's going to come off the top rope with a crazy contract and get you paid. Yeah, and, and the rumor is is that he was unhappy with the small raise he got in his extension. And it's funny because like how like we we <coughs> you put it out there and all the talk was oh he just signed an extension no way he would go. These extensions are all just kind of placeholders or, or really gives a, a, sh- a buyout setter. <laughs> That's all it is. What is the buyout? What's it going to cost Ohio State? That's all. I don't give a shit if he got extended, got a new raise, got a new contract. How much money is it going to cost to get him out of his contract? And will they pay it? Nothing else matters. He could have signed the contract extension Saturday morning. Talk to Ryan Day Saturday afternoon. And if Ryan Day said, hey, we'll buy you out of that contract, doesn't fucking matter. And that was my favorite argument. He just signed a contract extension. You need help, dude. Clickbait. It's like, what does that have to do with anything? I'm, congrats to him for signing a contract extension, but that doesn't mean that he, he wouldn't take the Ohio State job. I am curious the details around his Ohio State deal. Like, how many years will it be? Oh, will, yeah. will it be the two? Will it be the three? Um, and how much of a raise did he have? Did he take for it not for it just to be the one? Because remember, he was offering everybody a one year deal. Um, and like, oh, you know, Ryan Day missed on about four or five guys. Yeah. I mean, this was, a, I think I did the math, just the ones I know about. There might have been other ones because I, like I said, I'm not plugged in trying to break news. He's at best the fifth candidate. Yeah. It might be further down the list than that. I don't know. But I, I think he's I think he's a good candidate. I think he's a really great hire. I'm not shitting on it. I think the guy will do really well at Ohio State, especially considering the room he's walking into. So I'm a, if if I'm a Buckeye fan, I'm happy about this hire. Bro, my guy Ron posted his clip. I'm sold. I don't know shit about him. I just know he worked for Norvell and he had this to say, Pat, cue it up. I'm not the easiest running back coach in the world to play for. I am going to challenge you. I'm going to put you in some adverse situations. I don't care nothing about your stars. I don't care what rivals rank you, what 24. I do not care. When you come in this room, you're going to compete. I made a promise to Coach Campbell. I said that I am going to charge myself with bringing this room back where it's supposed to be at. So I tell these kids all the time, you come here, you're going to earn it. He earned that role last year. It wasn't given to him. And every, every guy in that room, they're going to tell you, man, Coach Locke ain't finna get nobody. No, I'm not getting you nothing. You're going to earn it. And I tell the young men that because we get so locked into the football aspect of things that kids think that's all that life is. No, the things I'm teaching you now, it's going to take you later on in life. Things don't always go your way. You got to fight. You got to scratch. You got to call for everything that you want. So that's that's what I'm doing with my, my boys in my room. I tell them all the time, the tools I'm giving you now are going to help you later on in life. You're going to earn it. I ain't giving you nothing. If you think I'm going to give you something, it's going to be one, two things. Either Coach Landon is going to get me up out of here, or you got to go. And I tell the kids all the time, I don't coach salt batch cookies. If you're a salt batch cookie, you got to get away from around me. And they got a bakery for that. Guess what it's called? The transfer portal. We gonna, you come here, you're going you gonna to fight, you're going to earn everything. Because I had to do the same thing. Coach Landon had to do the same thing to get his opportunity. Had to fight and claw. So that's the mindset that I live with. I love it. And they got a bakery for that. It's called the portal. He said, Take, and he said cookies. He meant pussies. He wanted to say pussies, but he was in an interview. So he called them cookies. And they got a bakery for that. It's called a transfer portal. And take your soft ass out that fucking door. I'd love it. I, I think I think the guy's going to do really well. Bro, he said, get up from around me. Like, he said, yo, you got to go. You're not finna, I'm not going to give you nothing. I'm, I'm finna- sold. I don't care. I'm sold. I, I think I think he's going to do really well. I think it's a great hire. Fifth choice, seventh choice, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I think he's a really good running backs coach. I think it's going to help in recruiting, specifically with that kid that Chris said. I don't know his name. Don't care. (laughs) But I don't. It's fucking, they tell me, I've seen all the time, four-star running backs are going to be this, that, and then they're not. So we'll see if he's that kid's any good. But I I like the mentality the guy brings. I think it's a good hire. I'm sold. And not not to be that guy, but it doesn't feel like a Ryan Day hire. So I'm super sold. (laughs) It definitely does. I'm not going to lie, like, He's the exact opposite of Matt Guerrieri, bro. Oh, well, yeah. That was a Jim Knowles hire, though. But yes, I know. I know. I'm, just, I'm just saying it, look, it just looks real different. I'm here for it. A real one? That's that's a real one. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I said it Saturday after really looking into the guy, watching some of his clips of interviews, watching some clips of him coach, watch, uh, you know, reading some of his stuff he puts out. He's a man of faith. He clearly is kind of a, a tough coach. I, 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 think it's, I think it's an A-plus hire. I'm excited because, it, and it makes you wonder in that in that running back room, who's he going to start? Because he's got no loyalty to either one of those dudes. No, so he's going to come in, kind of 
It's like it's like a new running back competition. I mean, before it was like a running back competition, but we knew it was going to be trades to start a running back. Now he comes in. Uh oh. It's going to be fun to watch, and I, and I think it's a perfect thing. I know Buckeye fans are pissed. Tony Alford went to Michigan. I think this is a great thing for the running back room because mm -hmm. sometimes, regardless of what you think of Tony Alford or whether you think he's a great coach, the best in the country, you think he's dog shit, whatever you think of him, I'm not even talking about that. Just the catalyst that is change can stimulate production like crazy yeah. as long as the guy doesn't isn't awful and i think this guy's a good coach so you bring in a new coach new blood new face new energy new attitude new verbiage new themes new philosophy you're gonna crank that fucking uh that that development and production of that room just because of change the old phil knight adage that he told urban paint the room like after a season just paint the room rearrange the desks and kids are going to walk in, and it's going to be fresh, different. It's going to be stimulating. I think it's going to be fantastic for the running back room. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited. Is it a red flag to you at all that he did not get the raise in the extension from Oregon? Uh, I mean, who knows? It could be staff pool money. could be that Dan Lanning didn't think he had to pay him that much to, to keep him. You know, it's, at some point, it's like Urban. Urban knew I wasn't leaving. So he always was hesitant to give me a raise or give me a long-term contract because he's like, I don't have to do that. You ain't going nowhere. Because <laughs> he knew that's where I wanted to be was Columbus. Mm -hmm. And I was divorced and my kids were in Columbus. I turned down Alabama. After I did that, I was cooked. He's like, yeah, this motherfucker ain't going nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We got him. No, I'm I'm excited and I'm curious to kind of see see what it looks like. Um, when do you expect it to be announced? It's going to be, what, probably tomorrow? I'd say, yeah, midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week. I think they'll announce it officially. And then, then the real question is, Tony Alford left in the middle of spring ball and what a fucking bad guy he is for that. Mm -hmm. That's what this guy's about to do too. Yeah. It's the nature of the industry. It just is. It's really important to remember that these coaches are not fans. Oh yeah. These coaches are coaches. It's a job. It's a profession. Um, and now I'm interested to see where Oregon goes because Oregon has got a whole lot of money too, and they can do kind of whatever, whatever they want with that money. Um, Saturday scrimmage, a lot of stuff coming out of it, Zach, a lot of clips coming out of it. De De Devin Devin Brown uh, does he still play for Ohio State? I heard he was the third string quarterback on last Thursday, so I'm just curious. All I heard for two months was that he needs like where is he going to transfer? He's going to transfer like it's not even you don't bring Will Howard in for some competition. You bring him yeah. in because he's the guy. That's what I heard from all the beat, the radio, local radio, ninety seven won the fan, fucking you name a fucking show. That's what all they talked about. And I I broke down Will Howard two games, and I was like a good player. Certainly not lights out fucking coming here to be the starter. And through, what do we have, eight, nine practices? Devin Brown's been better. All eight practices. Everyone. But I guess you got to be careful where you get your info. Because I talked to three different people that were at the scrimmage on Saturday. And they said Devin Brown was head and shoulders over anyone else on the field. And I'll take that with a grain of salt. Maybe he wasn't. But he certainly was good enough to get discussed. <laughs> And these dumb motherfuckers won't even say his name. It's, it's weird. wild. It's weird to me. Like, <clears throat> I promise you, if I heard from three people that Will Howard lit it the fuck up and it's not even close, I would be saying, dude, Will, I've heard Will Howard is a stud. He's going to be the guy. Like, why are you not? What is the reason? Be is it? And honestly, if it's because we thought he should start last year, you're fucking awful at your job, you petulant little bitch. Yeah. It's wild to me. And, and that's the only reason I could think of that they won't even mention the kid. He lit it up on Saturday. Like, had a fucking big-time scrimmage. Yeah, it was... It, it's just it's really weird to kind of see the reactions out of, out of it. No, it's almost like when he did make a big play, it's like things got picked apart. I was told all weekend, I got a throw that I'm going to put up on screen for you from, from the lantern, Zach. I was told all week weekend that, that this was a bad throw. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you grade this throw? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd probably uh, an 8.5. I mean, it's a little underthrown, yeah. but the ball placement outside shoulder was perfect. The timing was perfect. The trajectory was perfect. Slightly underthrown. So not a 10, but an 8.5. What's total weekend? That was a bad throw. I know. What the crazy judgment. I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, so, I'm like, so confused. It's like, we're saying that's a bad throw. And then I'm, I'm like asking everybody, like, does but anybody from have who? Yeah. From Devin and Devin threw it. And that's why.
Devin told you it was a bad throw? No, 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 no. I'm just, saying from who? Who just, told you that? Oh, was what? it a guy that knows more about the McDonald's menu than quarterback play? Because if it was, take take the source for what it's worth. Yeah. A guy that knows about the keto diet more than he knows about football. If it was, take it with a grain of salt. You have to. Consider the source, right? Mm -hmm. You always have to consider the source. I just I just can't remember a time where a quarterback competing for a starting position at Ohio State has been met with so much vitriol. Oh, it's, I think it's I wild. Can't, I can't but, but I also remember a lot of people pounding the table saying, Julian saying is light years better than anyone else. And he's going to be the starting quarterback as a true freshman. I, I heard that. I saw it on my timeline a lot. Last Thursday, they said that Saiyan has passed Devin Brown, and it's it's Saiyan and Will Howard are likely to be QB1 and QB2. And the the, the podcast but he was, or whatever was, was – was, But he was, he was taking third reps, and he didn't get his black stripe off, and Will Howard did. Like, I'm confused. I would say maybe it's some clickbait bitches out there. Like, I get it. That drives clicks. Julian saying that's the name that people really didn't think he was going to be in the mix. If you say he's outperforming everyone, people get a, get a little chub. They're yeah. like, oh, my God, a freshman? We're going to be so good for three years. Oh, that's so exciting. Let me click and watch this show. I get it. It's a, the nature of the beast. Dog, they did uh, a couple shows, did like their best throws of the day and did not mention any Devin Brown throws, and it kind of threw me off. And at this point, I'm wondering if – they're doing more harm than good for a kid that maybe has a 40% chance of being a starting quarterback because their dislike for Devin isn't, I don't think, a dislike for Devin. I think it's a dislike for me and you. Yeah. And I think that they're using that because they won't say our names. Yeah. And it's having – it's kind of splitting the fan base down the middle. And it's it's a, it's a little frustrating to see because it's like, damn, like if Julian Sand or Will Howard made that same exact throw, QB1 confirmed. Oh yeah, that that it, would be, it would be that crazy. Would be but but they're really creating a monster right now because I don't know Devin Brown. I've never spoke to him. I don't know anything about him other than what I've heard from people inside the Woody and what I see, right, in interviews and in games and you know what we all have seen. Like I don't have any insider information on Devin Brown as a person, but I heard him talk about the cowards in their mom's basement. And I'm telling you right now, if he gets named a starter, I don't know how much nil money it'll cost, but we will have a Sunday. Uh, Sunday See, night yeah. show with Devin Brown. <laughs> like, we'll push for that. Well, I don't know if we'll have it, but we'll yeah. try. Because he, he won't entertain that with any of these stupid motherfuckers. It feels like the vitriol towards him is because he lost the job to Kyle McCord, which I thought – it's funny that people still hold on to that because I thought that that was kind of we, – we were past that, right? I mean, I still hold it against him. That Okay. But I, 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 I had to – I don't want to call him Kyle McCord. And I'm not, I don't know that it's Devin's fault, but I still – I'm like, God damn, I can't believe – you didn't beat him out, so we didn't have to experience that. Well, I think I think he I do think he beat him out, and I think just whatever happened, ha we'll we'll never know. Because I mean, obviously, like no, it's not just you talking about it. It's like Dave Biddle, Dudley Maurice, Devin himself <laughs> saying that he won the straw poll and then didn't get named the starter. Like that does that does make it a little a little cloudy and weird. Um, but he also like the thing is the injuries have been such a concern. Yeah, like he's he's got he's. Yeah, he's, he's got to be, be healthy. healthy. He's not worth a shit if he's hurt. Right. He's he's got he's got to be healthy. But um, we are now, I think, what nine practices in, and all the media has said that with all the ones, it's been all of Devin Brown. If it was going to be Will Howard's job hand gifted to him, you would think that they would be trying to get him up to speed. Is it concerning to you at all that first up in line for everything, including team reps and movement reps, has been Devin? Well, no, because he he's been the better quarterback, and no one's taking the job from him. Okay. But it hasn't been Julian Sayan, so I don't know where anybody gets off saying Julian Sayan's going to be the starter. He hasn't even ran with the star starters. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <You> just, <coughs> I don't know. It's wild. Wild times yeah. in, in sports media. Wild times. Also, bro, I don't know how Ryan Day and the collector are going to swallow this, this million dollars they paid Will. That's, that's the big thing that has me hung up, thinking that maybe this isn't quite a competition. Um, I think at some point, that's just par for the course, right? Okay. At some point, you wanted to get that quarterback to come in to compete and possibly be the starter, and that was what you had to pay him. And does it create a little inequality between him and the rest of the quarterbacks that didn't get that money? Yes. But ultimately, in this day and age of college football, with NIL and the transfer portal, you might have a backup making more than the starter because you needed to pay that to get the backup there. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't know this, but I would bet Tyler Buckner made more than Jalen Milrow. Oh, probably. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. this is just the industry now. And you have to be okay with that. And a couple companies might be a little frustrated, but 
Welcome to college football. The fuck you want to do? Start a start the lesser player because he you had to pay him more money. Right. That's just stupid. It, it just feels like a fuck thing because I know like that the Ohio State offer was more than double what the USC offer was. Yeah, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. My, my thing is like, damn, you paid over double what USC was offering. I mean, unless we just got it like that. But I've heard too much about how our NIL doesn't have money for some other players. No, I, I, I think that was more scorn, scorn animal, like okay. beaten dog. After yeah. watching last year, they're like, I don't fucking care. Pay him twice as much. We just need to increase the, the the number of players that could be the guy in this room. Create a better, a more, a, a better competition that is more likely to yield the quarterback we need. We have one more partner, right? We do. One more quick word and we'll finish the show out. We'll be right back. All right, you know we love a little fantasy sports, and our partner, Prize Picks, is the best place to do it. Did you know you can win up to a hundred times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks? Four correct picks. You can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Obviously, March is gone, April's here. We got Final Four, NBA, all the different options to pick from and prize picks is the one that you need to go with all you have to do is download the app today and use code menace for a first deposit match that's free money up to a hundred dollars go to prizepicks.com and use pro- promo code menace and if you put in a hundred bucks they'll give you a hundred free dollars stack four picks or four uh player over or player to- uh totals more or less stack them together and you could win up to a hundred times your money turn a hundred dollars into into a thousand dollars and it, it, it's it's truly remarkable what you do. $100 into $10,000 if you hit it right. Go check them out. Price Picks, our longtime partner, and get that free cashish with promo code MENACE. Free money. And then once you win some money, withdraw it and come hang out at Yogi's on April 12th, day before the spring game, live at noon. Doors open at 11. There will not be a seat available. I'm telling you, get there early. Come hang out with us. Live shows at noon, 12 to 1.30. We're hanging out afterwards, drinking, partying, degenerating it up, whatever you want to, whatever we want to do. We're doing it. And I just saw on my timeline during commercial break, Yogi's just announced they're opening a bar in Miami, Florida with multiple pools, swim up bar. So I'm sending a text. I need a live show at the Yogi's, whatever it's called in Miami. Mm-hmm. That needs to happen. Yeah, that'd be that'd be uh that'd be that'd be a movie. Um, Jeremiah Smith, student appreciation day went absolutely fucking nuclear. Dude is a freak, dude. Ryan Day had this to say about him after the game. I'm gonna throw the quote up there and read it. I mean, I'm gonna be careful what I say, but he's been he's been certainly a pleasure to watch, and we're all really excited about his future. If he continues on the path that he's on, he's gonna play a lot of football and will certainly have a chance to start. So let's let's uh translate that. That means I don't want to say he's going to start because he could fuck it up, but he's going to start <laughs> and he's going to be really good. Dog. He Period. Was, he was doing shit against Denzel Burke and, and everybody and Jermaine Matthews. And, and just li- uh, the number one way to see how good a receiver is, is listen to the corners. Talk about him in, in, a, in, in interviews. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. all are like, I'm just telling you that, that that boy's different. Like they're all saying it. Dude is going to start. Just book it, mark it. I'm holding, I'm holding a gun to your head. What wide receiver room, the death beam, what wide receiver room are you taking at Ohio State last year's or this year's? Not even close. Not even close. Because Cardinal Tate didn't play last year. I mean, off the rip, Jeremiah might not be as good as Marv. He's a freshman. That's right. fine. So you lose a little there. Yeah. Emeka is Emeka. He's only going to be yeah. a better version of Emeka. So you win there. And then Cardinal Tate over Julian Fleming? come on man Cardinal Tate was better than Julian Fleming last year (laughs) he'll be much better than him this year when he actually plays and then Brandon Ennis as your fourth is I mean there's it's not even close it's just a wild concept to lose a guy who's going to be a top three pick and maybe be better at that position you just you know it's it's projection based it's like just who like who would you rather have as as the wide receiver coach but it's wild that it's even a discussion because in previous years if I would have asked you this like if I would have asked you this after the Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave guys left you'd be like shut the fuck up and get off the show Right, no doubt. But it's a comprehensive right unit, right? Like I don't there's not going to be anyone that's as good as Marv, but comprehensively I'm with a lot of conviction believe this receiver room will be better than last year's. And I think they're going to have a better quarterback which is a big part of it. Mhm. No matter who starts. Yeah. They're going to be better than Honda. <laughs> the Honda, the Honda. He's about to throw for 3K at Syracuse just so you know. I <laughs> I believe it. 
Um, I think it, the starting three this year are probably going to be what Jeremiah, Emeka, and uh, and Carnell Tate. I think they're going to rotate so much more, and I think the rotation is going to be the reason why this wide receiver room this year is better than last year's. So yes. that's that's kind of generally where I'm at. Zach, when it's super chats, and then get you up out of here. I know you got a, a busy couple of days. Sounds good. Let's do it. Um, let's see. HC, thanks for the two. Please make clear the dumping on air. Nolan, no dumping on air. I just don't. I think Julian Sands better. Yeah, I just think he's. He's in a battle for fourth right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's he's not dumping. Why? This is when is honesty dumping on someone. I don't know. Cause, cause we're talking about kids, but now these kids are getting paid lots of money. So yeah, but never mind that, that, that is what it is right now. It doesn't mean he can't grind work and develop and become a fucking first round draft pick. That can happen. I've seen it happen right, right now. He's fifth battling to become fourth. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Ryan, thanks for the five. You guys are prime Howard Stern version of college football podcast. And I'm fine with that. But not now. Howard Stern back in the day. Not that motherfucker now. He's a douche now. It's a pretty cool compliment. Yeah, I'll take it. We don't have chicks like getting off on speakers. If you ever seen the movie Private Parts. Uh, mm -mm. Oh, you got to watch it. Chris, thanks for the five. My guy, Chris. My guys, Chris Cleveland will always be better than Akron. That's why the Final Four is here. Akron is lucky to be in the group of cities we claim, 216. If you take your best five basketball players and put them up against Akron's best five basketball players, Akron will win in a seven-game series in three games. That <laughs> yeah. Three games. Because it will be three 20-point blowouts, meaning the fourth game's over. Like, you're not even doing it. That's fine. Cleveland is still way better than Akron. I not agree. even. Not even. I, not even close. Not you're even you're close. right about that. It is not even close. Shout out to A. The real A. That's what Gucci Man was talking, rapping about. Okay. The A. Rose, thanks for the five. Re O V E uh, T R for real at big programs. More common than we think. 16, 17, 18. All had true freshmen starting in the Natty. Bo Nix goes nine and three and 19 and a few more cases. No, what we've always said is. True freshman starting quarterback game one. Yeah, and I I didn't see I, I must have missed that segment on OVE. I and don't know. also, what was eighteen? Eighteen did not have a true wait. One of those years did not have a true freshman start the Natty, right? I don't remember. Twenty sixteen. Sixteen was when we got blown out by Clemson. Yeah. Um, no. Incorrect, because one of those years you're giving Tua Tungavailoa credit for starting. He came in at halftime for that game. That couldn't have been it. The other one would have been Trevor Lawrence in 18, I believe. He won the Natty, but he didn't start the year. He didn't start till game four or five, and they almost lost North Carolina and Sam Howell. 2016, I do not know who the quarterback was. Um, um, but usually, usually I know that kind of thing, so. That's all right. Whatever. I'll look it up. We can keep going. Keel, thanks for the two. Keenan Bailey better watch his mouth around him. <laughs> he better. Super chat of the day. Mir, thanks for the two. Only thing I can't get over is the 33. I hate it. Yeah, that seems, that seems to be the thing. I love it. I do, too. I think it's cool. I think it's cool beans. You look at who won the Natty in 2016. Clemson won it in 16. If Clemson won it in 16, it wouldn't have been with a true freshman. Deshaun mm -hmm. would have been a redshirt freshman, I think, if if it was Deshaun. But six, yeah, it had to be Deshaun because in 2013 it was Taj Boyd. Yeah, I don't know. Was he was he a true freshman that year? I don't know. Let's see. Go ahead, keep it moving. I'll tell um, you. Speed thanks. No, he couldn't have been a true freshman that year if they had a new quarterback in 18. <laughs> no, couldn't have been. Um, speed thanks for the two. How long would it take a new QB to learn the plays? It depends. I mean, it depends on how smart they are, how hard they work. I mean, you can learn the offense in the like in. Uh, a handful of months, three months, if you get coached well. Member Nick, thanks for the five. Hey, Coach, wanted to shout out my little cousin Jaden Wallace on visits to Virginia Tech, Bowling Green, Iowa State, and Iowa. Running back, all Ohio. He's a junior, runs like Coram. Dog. I love it. Shout out Jaden Wallace. Yeah, keep an eye on him. Uh, Mike, thanks for the five. Marv made it to the Heisman ceremony with a QB throwing ducks. Fuck out of here. Beat nerds jerk off the cartoons and McCord practice film. Yes, they do. Yeah. So Deshaun was the quarterback in 16. He was a junior. Okay. There it is. Get us out of here, Pat. Or Zach, get us out of here. We got to go. We got to get, get out of here. We appreciate you, Menace Army. Great show today. Like the video. Subscribe. Become a member on YouTube of the Menace Army. You get all kinds of shit. We'll detail it later. But if you want to support, support. We appreciate you. Menace out.